welcome back to my garage. I'm Jeremy and this is an inertia switch circuit. As you just saw, if you whack an inertia switch with the world's tiniest hammer, it does turn off the fuel pump. And that's the way it works in a real car as well if you were to get into an accident. So now that you know the circuit works, let me show you how it's wired and we'll also talk about what is actually inside one of these inertia switches. Now there are six components on this board today and a miniature hammer and two of those components are actually inline fuses. We also have a single pole, single throw switch, which just means it's a switch that is on or off, nothing in between, and it has two terminals. We also have a four pin relay. This is a Bosch style relay, which just has four pins on it. And we're gonna talk about the wiring of this in just one second. This right here is the inertia switch. There's actually many different styles that you can buy, but this is just kind of a generic one that's really popular online. This right here is the external fuel pump. It's universal, it can be used for just about anything you want, but most fuel pumps are wired the same way with just a positive and a ground. And then we have the miniature hammer, which does actually have a warning on it for wearing eye protection, just in case things get a little rowdy with it. Now there are many different ways that you can wire a fuel pump circuit with an inertia switch. This is just one option. So let's follow the power through the circuit and we'll see how it works. Now the power all kind of starts at these two fuses. And these happen to be inline fuses that sit in the middle of wires. But if you're building a race car or a hot rod from scratch, you may have a fuse panel that you're using instead of inline fuses. So let's look at the left fuse first. We have power coming in through a fuse to the switch. And then when we turn the switch on, power comes out of the switch and goes to pin 86 on the relay. Now this is a four pin relay. It has four pins on the bottom and each one is numbered. We have pin 86, pin 85, pin 30 and pin 87. Now the purpose of a relay is it allows a small switch to control a large circuit. So let's say for example, this fuel pump draws 20 amps through it, but you have a five amp switch. A five amp switch would melt if it had 20 amps going through it. So what we do is we have a relay, which is rated to handle up to 40 amps. And the relay is turning on and off the fuel pump circuit and it's controlled by the five amp switch. So the five amp switch is just telling the relay to turn on and the relay is telling the fuel pump to turn on. That's why it's called a relay. Now, as I mentioned, this wire right here is going to pin 86 from the switch. The opposite side of the relay is pin 85 and that's this green wire right here, which goes to our inertia switch. Now the inertia switch side of the relay is just going to ground. So this blue wire just goes to ground. And that could be a chassis ground, or if you wanted to run that all the way back to your battery for some reason, by all means, you can do that too. Now, if the inertia switch is set by getting into an accident or whacking it with a miniature hammer, then it breaks the ground side of the circuit and therefore the relay cannot turn on. Now, if the relay can't turn on, that means the fuel pump can't turn on either. Luckily, it's very easy to reset it just by pushing the button on the top of the inertia switch. And that reconnects the ground circuit of the relay because this breaks it and this resets it. This fuse right here is the main power feed for your fuel pump and it goes into pin 30 on the four pin relay. The output is pin 87, which is this red wire that goes over to the fuel pump. And then of course the fuel pump also has a ground wire coming off of it, which would be grounded right to the chassis. So this fuse is going to be a lot larger than this fuse because this one is just protecting the switch circuit and this one is protecting the fuel pump power feed circuit. So this fuse is based on how much amperage your fuel pump is actually drawing. And this one can be very small because it's only protecting the really low amperage circuit that is turning the relay on. Now let's take apart one of these inertia switches and see what's inside because I think we're both gonna find it really cool. Now before I cut this open and I show you what's inside, I wanna make note of one other thing. You can see that there's actually three pins in it and each one is labeled. So there's a control, a normally open, and a normally closed pin. And when you actually get this thing in the mail from the people that I got it from, it comes with the wires set up just like this, which is set to the normally open position. But what I had to do was actually swap the pins around so that it was a default to a normally closed position. Let me show you how I did that. Now, the first thing I did was I took a hair clip from my wife. Then I bent the hair clip at a 90 degree angle like this. I popped out the yellow face on this connector like that. And then I put the hair clip into the top of the connector like this. 
and pushed upward and pulled the clip out, or pulled the pin out, I should say. And then I just stuck it into the other hole so that I had one on this side and one on that side. Once the pin is in the other spot, I just went ahead and put the yellow tab back in, and now we are in business, just like that. So with it wired this way, when the button is pushed down, these two wires are actually connected to each other. And then if you tap this with a hammer, or if it was to get into a car accident, the button would pop up, and now there's no connection between these two terminals. We are now ready to take this apart, and I have a couple of tools here to help me. Let's take off the rubber boot on the top. All right, so under the rubber boot, we have the button. And we should be able to pop this, uh, this white button off and see the magic underneath, hopefully. Okay, here we go. So right here, this is the actual button. So by pushing this down, we are now resetting the inertia switch. And then with it up, which I can do right here. Well, maybe I can't. Maybe I have to whack it with a hammer. Okay, so with it up, it actually pushes the button up and disconnects the switch. So let me see if I can show you how this works. Right here, there's a connection. And then right here, there's a connection. So with this down, the electricity is passing through the switch from one side of the switch to the other. And then as soon as you tap this, it pops this, this button up and it breaks the connection right here. So now this connection is no longer connected to this. And under here, hopefully, we can see the ball that kind of causes this thing to jump out of place. All right, so right here is the ball. And this ball is held in place with a magnet. And here you can get a better look at the, at the two connections, right here and right here. And all this switch is doing is just basically connecting this side to this side. So when you tap it, this ball bounces up into the switch, pushes the button up, and breaks the connection between this side and that side. So now we know how an inertia switch is wired, we know what's inside it, and we know how it works. We also know how to reset it, and we know if we turn this switch on and we whack the inertia switch with the mini hammer, it turns off the fuel pump. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like, maybe even share it with a friend and leave a comment. If you want to see more, hit subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Until then, I'm going to throw some stuff at that inertia switch and see if I can set it off. That did it.